Tales of Basiria is the 16th entry in the Tales of series. Despite being deep into the series at this point, Basiria not only manages to appeal to longtime Tales fans with its host of improvements and innovations, but also manages to be fresh and exciting at the same time. This would be a welcome start for newcomers. Basiria is also the first entry in the series to star a sole female protagonist in Velvet Crow. Zillia had two main protagonists, one of them being female. Velvet's story is a tragedy from the very beginning, and she's a much darker and more bitter lead than you might be used to in a Tales game. But she's not Shadow the Hedgehog either. The writing in Tales of Basiria is fantastic, and while it is steeped in some dark and mature themes, it never feels too edgy or over egg. It's actually one of few Tales games to share direct connections with another one, being set in the same world as Zysteria a thousand years prior, Zysteria being the one that came out just before this one. There are some interesting connections players of Zysteria will pick up on, but you could get everything out of Basiria without any knowledge of Zysteria. It's entirely self-contained. This place never changes, does it? It does too change. The seasons, the wind, the weather. Change one and the sea's totally different. And the same goes for what lies across the sea. Across the sea? Sometimes I just don't know what you're talking about. The reason Velvet sets off on her Kill Bill-esque revenge journey is explained in the playable prologue, and you feel like you're with her every step of the way. Her pain's still real, and while she does become a demon, her plight feels human throughout. Considering your party in the game mostly consists of demons and Malachim, it's a story that is constantly asking what it means to be human. The English dub is great, and on top of having a hefty amount of cutscenes, there's a ton of skits to work through too optional conversations that you're prompted to watch in certain areas. These are more animated than they've been in any Tales of game before, and despite their throwaway sounding name, all the skits are a joy to watch and add a lot of characterization to everyone. I wouldn't recommend missing out on any of them. All the characters that join Velvet's party feel like they have a reason to be there, and their own goals that they're trying to achieve parallel to her own. Nobody is a cookie cutter companion, and they'll all constantly surprise you. Even the main NPCs are actually very well rounded, Besides great characters, the game also takes you to a variety of gorgeous locations throughout Velvet's quest. The ones that stood out most to me were the snowy coves of Hellors and the tranquil beaches of Isolt and Harrier. It's a shame that early on Basiria is a little bit heavy handed with the bland cave style dungeons, but it quickly gains momentum at taking you to much more interesting environments, be they dungeons or fields. Not that there's a huge difference. The maps and tales of Basiria are all very similar in terms of function. There are only a handful of instances in dungeons that would really constitute being a puzzle. Mostly you navigate an area from A to B, stopping off along the way to pick up glowing treasures, chests, or cat's orbs, which are used as currency to open cat's chests, one way of obtaining fashion accessories. As usual, you can cover your characters in all sorts of absurd accessories, which are then fully used within the cutscenes and battles and everything. It's all very funny, and one of Tales' best features. The maps are also stuffed to the brim of roaming enemies. Touch them and you'll instantly be transported to a fight with the group of enemies. If you get them without them seeing you, then you enter a favorable encounter, or trigger a fight with more than one roaming group too close together to one another, so, you know, one enemy's here and the other one's right next to it. And the ground will glow dark and you enter a dangerous encounter with more and stronger enemies entering into the fray as you take them out. There's also a chance that after an encounter with some regular enemies, a dire foe will show up, a much stronger enemy, a type of which differs depending on the area. Similarly, there are also hunts scattered around the areas marked by a big red dot that yield bounty rewards, as in money, not the delicious coconut chocolate. You can avoid enemy encounters easily by just running around them, but without doing your duty you'll eventually become underleveled. There are options later on to stop lower level enemies trying to jump you, or to instantly destroy them, which can aid with exploration you didn't get around to the first time through. So most of the time you're not experiencing the excellent story of Tales of Basiria, you'll be going through a lot of battles. On average, most normal fights will take less than a minute, maybe even around 20 seconds if you get your strategy right. When battles don't have load times between them, you'll end up blazing through them pretty fast. There's a lot of satisfaction to be had in being able to read the situations well enough to carry out the optimum strategy and close it out as quickly as possible. Even though there are so many enemies in each area, you'll want to keep challenging yourself to clear them out as quickly as possible. Tales of Basiria uses a tweaked version of the linear motion battle system, this time called the Liberation Linear Motion Battle System, or the LLMMBS, I suppose you could say. You can run around freely, swap between active party members, and even substitute inactive party members into the fight. Actions this time 
around are governed by the soul gauge, which indicates the amount of stamina you have available and the length of the combos you can pull off with it. Enemies have their own soul gauge too, and you can steal their souls by killing or stunning them. To use your own special arts, you need to spend a soul which gives it to an enemy when you have three or more. This gives every battle an element of push and pull, and constantly makes you evaluate the risk of what you want to use your souls for. If you spend one now, perhaps to enter Velvet's Beast mode, which, in turn, can steal back but also quickly drain your own health, can you recover your spent souls by the time you pull off your special combo ending move and get a net gain, or perhaps you'll end up with a net loss, and is that worth it? Being low on souls forces you to play much more defensively as you try to win them back but it never feels like it's not your own fault for allowing yourself to get into that situation. It sounds somewhat complicated, but it quickly becomes second nature. At most, you'll have a combo chain of four attacks, each mapped to each of the four face buttons. You can switch between which face button you're chaining at any time, allowing you to freely move between combos. You can leave these to their defaults if you want, these will change themselves as you unlock stronger moves, or you can fully customize them. Different enemies have different elemental weaknesses and resistances, so that's something you might want to keep in mind as you enter a new area. Tales of Basiria is full of systems like this, ones that can be as complicated as you want them to be. Sure, it's always going to be optimal to tweak these systems yourself to make sure you're fully answering all the problems the game throws at you, but just as equally, the game's default should be good enough to see you through. The combo settings can be as complex as you want. The cooking and discovery systems are handy, but are never completely necessary. Tweaking your equipment and titles can yield some very helpful rewards, but just the same, you can stick with the basics and just upgrade your biggest number weapons to continue on your way and be fine. There are some endgame optional areas, side quests, and other content where you'll really need to be on top of these, of course, but for the most part, the game is fine to adapt to the desires of the player, and it's great to see so much thought being put into this for those that just want to make it through the main story. The only area that drops the ball systems-wise is with Velvet's AI in battle. You can switch between manual, semi-automatic, this is the game's default which mainly forces your character to close the gap after you input an attack, and automatic. Too many times in automatic, Velvet would enter beast mode, allowing her HP to drain completely to 1 HP before she used her finisher to exit the mode, while I looked on in despair while eating soup. For the most part though, she'll be able to figure it out in your standard cannon fodder types of battle. It might not be the most technically impressive game out there, but as usual for a Tales of game, the visual design in Basiria is very much on point. While Basiria isn't being released on PlayStation 3 over here, it was in Japan. It just makes me all the more excited to see what a Tales of game can be like without hardware limitations being part of its design. With that said, we reviewed the PC version of the game, and at the highest settings in 60fps is a real dream to play, and a pleasantly surprising PC port. Not only does Tales of Basiria excel in telling a gripping and mature story, but it also has action-packed battles in some stunning environments. At times, it can begin to feel a little bit repetitive, but when the writing is good enough to make you want to find out what's going to happen next, and the mechanics that are being repeated are so enjoyable, that's not wholly a bad thing. Fans should definitely enjoy everything on offer here, and newcomers should definitely consider making Basiria their first Tales of game. It's a real treat through and through.